We're going to talk this morning uh, with our guests uh, from HSA Bank, Kevin Robertson, and also <clears throat> Nate Solomon, uh, his client from uh, Zurich, North America. And Nate being the client to HSA Bank, HSA Bank is one of the early, um, uh, let's say, pioneers in the space of consumer-directed healthcare and have been following them ever since. I've actually worked with your company back in the Microsoft implementation program back in the early 2000s. Uh, so it's really nice to see you here and thank you for sponsoring all these years and being here this year. And they will be speaking in a session uh, at 11.10 today. Uh, however, which I don't believe is live streamed. Um, so let me just get into the questions. Welcome again. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> I've been asking a question of all the interviewees in the last day about basically these three themes that this conference is really the pillars. Pace, process, performance. If you had to choose one of them as a priority, which one would really be for you the one that you think is most achievable in the near term? I'll start with you, Nate. Thank you. I would, I would think performance would be, for our employees, uh, we have to deliver on healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. So. The worst thing that happens is we don't successfully deliver, there's problems with insurance, there's problems with eligibility, their family isn't covered, et cetera. So whatever it is, we ha has to run smooth, it has to run efficiently, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, I think performance is really paramount. Okay, and so how about Kevin, from your perspective and you know, even the corporate line, if it's not your own, what is your priority? Well, honestly, it would probably mirror very closely with uh, what Nate has said. It, mm -hmm. It's all about, and I'll put a little spin on the performance, mm -hmm. as the experience. Mm -hmm. One of the most critical aspects of a vendor delivering services on their needs is delivering on that experience for not only the employer but also the employees. If we were to execute poorly or if you know, the employer was to have poor choices or, or poor plan designs, all that, it ruins the overall experience and impacts the, uh, the employee's experience and, and their likelihood to want to you know, continue with that program and adopt consumer-directed health Now, is the so HSA, so Bank, SA, HSA Bank program uh, a standalone or is it integrated with the Zurich North America health plan? Are you working directly with Nate as a contract? <laughs> So just to, um, just to clear this up a little bit, I, we actually, when I was with a prior employer, I've only been with Zurich about four months. Ah, okay. That's when I was the client of HSA Bank. Got we, it. And I was with them for years. So just so, Got, so uh, Zurich fine. doesn't today work with them, but... Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so but when you, I did work Zurich, with them... your current position, are you working with uh, an HSA? We fund? are, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, so in that situation currently, is it integrated into your health plan or are you at Zurich buying it separately? Uh, it's integrated in, so we okay. actually have a full replacement strategy. We offer three HSA plans, mm -hmm. and um, so we have very high participation. And in your former it. position, where you did work with Kevin directly in his company and had a contract, uh, was that a standalone relationship, or was it through the health plan again? Yeah, it was actually through the health plan, okay. although we were we contracted separately with, uh, with them. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, I know you guys have seen these slides that we're going to show to the live streamers now. Uh, but there's one right now that talks about the HSA savings <clears throat> growth over time. I actually personally had, was very close to this because I worked at Luminos, which is now owned by WellPoint and became their CDHP strategy. But you'll see from the slide that the growth has been, you know, getting up there in the last couple of years, but, you know, pretty disappointing in the first few years. You know, when I was at Luminos in 2003, uh, and the Medicare Modernization Act passed, and we had a, we had a lot to do being in Washington and helping you know, getting legislators to know how good this is, that this legislation as an earmark to the Medicare Modernization Act should pass. My question though is for you, Kevin, are you still disappointed about the numbers overall nationally and what's it going to take to get just to skyrocket up there? Uh, actually, no, I'm not disappointed at all. Of course, if you looked at some of the early estimates, you know, they were, I've seen anything between 25, even 50 million uh, accounts by now. Uh, I think what the, the early analysts missed is that this, was, this is not just a new product offering. This really is a mind shift, yeah. and that takes some time to embrace. I think we've reached the point of critical mass now where it's actually what I would call mainstream. And that to me, I, I'll use an example. There's a, a large software company that is in the Pacific Northwest that used to be known for... What color for, is their logo? <laughs> <laughs> they, had, they, won't go they, were, they were known for a very rich 
traditional benefit plan, very low out of pockets, very low deductibles. And over time, uh, in about a span of about three to four years, they went from that very traditional rich benefit plan to a full replacement high deductible health uh, plan. With that was HSA. courageous. It, it was, but that to me was kind of the signal that, hey, this has arrived. And, and that is being mirrored across a number of large employers. And that really was to me the signal that, hey, this has arrived. So if you look at the growth and where it's coming from over the last, let's say, five years, as opposed to the first six or seven years. Mm -hmm. it, it was the early adopters were the, the individuals and smaller groups. Well, now it's actually all large group. It's being very driven very much by mid and large employers adopting and adopting what I would say aggressive strategies. And how about the uh, direct-to-consumer? You obviously have people that go on to, to COBRA and have coverage, uh, continuous coverage and whatnot. How many people are in the direct-to-consumer category that are not coming from the old COBRA? Sure, there's quite a bit of that. And honestly, the federal exchanges and, and marketplace exchanges have- Are you really, available on the exchanges? Well, on the federal exchange, no, there are no- HSA, HSA Yeah, yeah the, there, you could obviously buy the high deductible health plan, but even there, one of, one of our a gripes about that is they're not easily identifiable necessarily state to state. And that is changing. There's been some new rules at CMS recently yes. to make sure plans are very well distinguished. Yeah, it's getting better. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But and so on that point, you know, are we going to be at a better place when tellers, I know that you don't have brick and mortar like a lot of other banks that have HSAs, but are we going to be at a better place when every teller knows to talk to its client that's at the counter? That, did you think about an HSA? It, that may occur, but I think we're still quite a bit away from that. The reason I would say that is because in American benefits, in the working uh, age Americans, the norm is still to buy your coverage through your employer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not going to change anytime soon. Of course, if you look at like Kaiser Family Foundation survey and you look at adoption rates, there are some very small employers that are dropping coverage, sending people to the exchanges. But once you get above 50, and for sure once you get above 100 employees, the norm is the employers are offering coverage, and the norm is that the employees are taking the, the options through their employer. I don't see that changing. Interesting. Thank you. Nate, just to, you know, we're going to close here shortly, but um, briefly, if you can just uh, touch on, with this presidential election, not getting into your own personal politics, um, but what do you think in terms of if the law is appealed? Are we going to have any jeopardy about HSAs, and is it going to stunt this growth? If it's repealed? Right, if yeah. it were yes. to be. Um, I'm not, you know, I think across America it will have a pretty big impact, as we know there's millions of, of previously uninsured Americans that, are, that have health care coverage. For major employers, um, it's a little bit hard to say what the impact might be, right? Because I don't know, frankly, that the, and you're right, personal politics aside, I don't know that the implementation of ACA uh, has actually affected large employers, other than some of the compliance and regulatory things right, we've had correct. to do. But from a strict <laughs> insurance basis, uh, we cover our you know, employees and their families, their dependents, et cetera, and they, I think they um, appreciate having a large group plan to be able to enroll in, uh, but I think one, one aspect of that is the age 26 um, thing where, where people can cover their children, so having a couple of college-age kids, it's nice to be able to have them on, on our insurance plan. I don't know if that particular rule would, would be impacted. If so, that would be uh, fairly devastating. One last question before you, Nate, before we close, is the um, transparency tools. Are those transparency tools that obviously a high deductible plan requires now? You can't have a high deductible plan without transparency tools, it seems, to, in order to spend your HSA dollars, if you are going to spend them and not accumulate them over time. Are you, uh, with the transparency tools, offering those through the HSA or through another vendor contract? Um, we offer them through another vendor, okay. uh, through our insurer, actually, okay. but, um, yeah. Okay, very good. Well, listen, thank you both. Thanks again for sponsoring the conference, thank and you. thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, thank Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you.